Hi everybody! So I've been moving my rotary craft stuff up here, and I would like to convert a lot of my power generation to go through rotary craft. And for that I have decided to go with hydrokinetic generators. That is to say water wheels. And all I need to do to build those is come up with some diamond shaft cores and paddle paddles. And all I need for that are some spring steel ingots. And that's going to take a little bit of doing. 1150 degrees is a pretty tough nut to crack. So far with these two gasoline engines running together, I've gotten it up to 894. Which isn't even close. So what I need is a more powerful engine. Or a lot more engines, but I want to go with more power. The performance engine looks like it ought to do the job. It's actually four times as powerful as one of these engines. So for that, I've got to come up with some aluminum alloy. Since these aluminum alloy cylinders are made of aluminum alloy. And for that, I'll need some silicon powder. And for that, I will need to blast furnace some sand and some blaze powder and some aluminum powder. And for aluminum powder, you'd think I'd just grind some aluminum, but you'd be wrong. As it turns out, aluminum powder is a byproduct of refining redstone ore in one of these extractors. And I state this because it took me several minutes to actually find this out. So now I have no fuel in these things, so let's fix that. And I, of course, have these uh, engine control units here set to turn them on and off. And once we have that running, we have 131 kilowatts of power, which is twice what I need. And for torque, we need more. So we want gearboxes. Preferably one that hasn't been damaged by running it without lubricant. So, red is output, and we want to increase the torque on this, and we're giving it 4 to 1, which is twice what we need. Now we're going to have to go through all of these steps one at a time. So we will have to follow these power, torque, and speed guidelines for each of these steps. 
And since our current speed is only 128 grads per second, we're going to have to put a different gear for the second stage. But that's okay. We're just going to sit here and finish this first stage. We have 10 redstone ore, which, since each stage gives you about a 50% chance of doubling your ore, should come out to about an average of 15 ore dust. We came out with 17, so that's pretty good. But now that we're on to the next stage, we need more speed. Which is easy enough, we just switch this over to speed. And off it goes, doubling around half of it again. Which this time has netted us 26 or slurry. But for the next step, we need even more speed. Four times the speed we have with this four times gear. So, 16 to 1 gearbox. Red is output. Set for speed. Crank it up. And let her go which then yields 37 red ore solution. And we still have one more step to go. And for this one, we're going to need 256 newton meters of torque. So for that, we take out our 16 times gearbox and replace it with steel shaft. Once again, red is output. Turn on the clutch, let her rip, and then we take a break from letting her rip because we don't have enough fuel to actually finish this operation. And let's see that. Pretty sure that regular temperature should be okay. I hope so, because I've only got like, uh... One minute of fuel left. And this guy's gonna have to take a vacation. And this guy. And we need to stick in another steel shaft as soon as I can find it. There we are. And hey, Windows has an update. Isn't that nice? Red is output. Now we just have the one engine with one minute worth of fuel which should be plenty. Should be. Once I have the fermenter pointing the right direction anyway. 
All right, so in a few minutes we'll have plenty of fuel or plenty of sludge which I can burn into this ethanol fuel. So yeah, we're generating plenty of sludge and cooking that into ethanol crystals. And by the way, I would also like to say that I can't recommend enough these engine control units. Right now this one has this engine turned down to about 6% speed, which is not useful for the extractor, but it gives plenty of power and speed for this fermenter and stretches three minutes worth of fuel into three hours. So yeah, when you can afford to, you really should turn your engine speed down and stretch out your fuel time if you're running on things like ethanol. At any rate, I have plenty of uh, ethanol fuel now, but I'm going to go ahead and cook up the rest of this, uh, the rest of these leaves. And then we'll resume the extracting. And that should be plenty of ethanol crystals. So we'll take this back out of the way. And we shall restore this bevel gear. Input west, output up. And at full speed, this should give us enough speed to finish this job, but not quite enough torque. So we'll put this second engine back. along with this shaft junction. And we're finally back to refining the redstone ore solution. Which in the end has finally netted us with 54 redstone ore flakes. And 14 aluminum powder, which may not be quite as exciting, but it was the point of this whole exercise. But better than that, these flakes give us four redstone each. So yeah, that's quite a bit. So if for some reason you're going through a lot of redstone, like you're making giant uh, Christmas ornaments out of it, 
then uh, yeah, you should probably do your or increasing through this method. Okay, so now we're ready to get back to the point of all this. We need silicon powder, which we get from this aluminum powder. And that's about the only way we can get that powder, by the way. Well, you can get it out of lapis, but it's the same procedure and you don't get quite as much. But once we get the heat on this high enough, and once we add blade powder, we should start getting our silicon. And we should get quite a bit of it. Which is good. It's always good to have some to spare. Especially since it can substitute for diamonds in some recipes. And about 70 silicon powder. Way more than I need. So now all I have to do is put the silicon powder in here and get some aluminum ingots in here and then heat it up to 900 degrees centigrade. But as you can see, this setup won't get it any hotter than 894. Six degrees short. Now, I know that ambient temperature has an effect on what this friction heater can do. So if I take this over to the desert out there, it'll do better than it does here. But why stop there? I say we give this thing a try in the nether and see how it does. I have read that using the friction heater in the nether gives a uh, bonus of 300 degrees, but I've also heard that that has been nerfed in more recent versions of Rotary Craft. So we'll just see how that comes out. In the meanwhile, those of you who have been following me in the past may be wondering how things have been going with the uh, dental work. And as you can tell, I can now say things like password and prestidigitation. So yes, I've had some good results. And I like to think that my appearance has been improved as well. And if you want to sit around till the end of the video, I might actually manage to include some live footage of myself. If that's the sort of thing you want to see.
And I bet all of that stuff is gone from these engines. Yep, we are fuel free. But we are ready to, to test this out. Let's see, this just takes silicon powder. So all we have to do is turn this on and see what happens. We're going to need more heat than that. Come on, you can do it. Eight hundred ninety four. Come on, just a little bit more. So, yeah, looks like that nerf is officially in place. So, that's kind of saddening. I'm going to have to uh, put more engines on this thing. But hey, while I'm here, I may as well share this other thing with you. I did some quarrying here with the builder block from bedrock to bedrock. Partly because I wanted glowstone and nether quartz, but also because in the past, in undergarden biomes, the uh, trees that grew here would also grow in the middle of the bedrock and allow one to get through To the overbed rock. Unfortunately, that no longer seems to be the case. But I did come up with something else I could do. I have this teleport spell. It's basically a blink spell and it will let me go through walls. And as it turns out, it does also let me go through bedrock. So that's fairly awesome. And this is really awesome. And I certainly do intend to explore it some more, but that's not the focus of this episode. Alright, so I have doubled my engines. And assuming that I've got everything wired up right, that should mean double the power going through this thing. And that should be enough to get us up to our 900 degrees at least, so we can make some performance engines. Eight thirty nine, eight seventy two, eight ninety eight, nine nineteen. And that is enough to produce our recipe. And 
And there's our nine aluminum alloy ingots. And let's see if we can't get some more out of this. And we're up to 1,002 degrees centigrade, which is not the 1,300 we were going to need to make that spring steel. But now we can make those performance engines, which will allow us to make those spring steel. And performance engine upgrades. Isn't that cool looking? All right, I'll need to make a couple of radiators for the other ones. And then we can set up the water supply for these things. All right, so here's an important note when it comes to adding coolant to these engines. It seems that it only takes them from the rear of the engine, not the top. So we'll just finish filling these things up. Alright, so all my engines are finally full of water. They've all got fuel for about four and a half minutes. And blaze rods as fuel additives. We have our cold coke and redstone ready. And I have already calculated that it should take 72 ingots of spring steel to make three water wheels. And as a bonus, my first megawatt. And yes, it's heating up really quickly, but is it going to get hot enough? And I'm really not sure. We're going to need... Oh, 1150 degrees. We've already surpassed that. Which means I'm doing something else wrong. And it's probably that I need Rotary Craft Cold Coke. which I get by cooking coal in a blast furnace. That actually should be not a problem. And 36 Rotary Craft Coal Coke. Seventy two rotary steel engines humming along happily. 
and in just 46 degrees we should have our spring steel. And finally, 72 spring steel. Now we are almost there. I'm going to have to mine some diamonds for the diamond shaft cores. And then all of this is going to have to be cleared out. Alright, looks like we've got all our pieces together. for three hydrokinetic engines. And we will want to set it up with some lubricant. And I don't know exactly how much lubricant these things take. So I guess we'll try 20. And I'm assuming that if you put lubricant in one, it should lubricate all of them. And considering the distance, it shouldn't take long for the lubricant to come in. unless it needs to be lower than the level of the fluid. Give me a moment and I'll fix that right up. And yeah, that seems to have done it drawing from the bottom of the tank. And they all have lubricant, so I think we're ready to test this. I've also moved a dynamometer over here so we can measure how much power we get out of it. So all we have to do is turn off these levers, withdraw the pistons, and let the water flow. One point five megawatts. Not too bad. And no risk of things blowing up if I run out of water. In future episodes, I'm also going to hook it up with Electrocraft so I can actually use the power in the ways that I want to. But for right now, there's one other promise I need to keep. Hi everybody, I'm Crazy Eddie, and this is my face. So now that the hiatus is over, I have a lot of plans and not a lot of time to do them. So much as I would like to, Paint in the End probably won't be updated more frequently than you've been seeing. I do have plans for a new Minecraft series in a mod pack that I'm building now called Nomadic Skies. 
And I also have some plans on some new science and educational themed videos on a separate channel that I'll be starting soon. So you have those to look forward to. So that's my plans for the future. For right now, there's our hydrokinetic generator and all the stuff you need to build it. So join me next episode to see what I do next. And until then, have some fun, build something cool, and have a nice day.